Hello, welcome to the new video. Uh, this time we are playing uh, the white blue uh, Urza uh, artifact deck. Uh, okay, so uh, I played this deck uh, in the past, uh, but uh, similar deck like this, but uh, just uh, thought of uh, putting uh, the ledger shredder in, and it seemed like the perfect fit. Uh, in comparison to previous version, uh, I have put Shredder instead of uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, Stoneforge Mystic was uh, easily uh, the worst uh, card in the deck. It was just a tutor for Nettlethist. Nettlethist is uh, really good in, in here, but it often seems uh, like uh, wasting a turn just playing uh, Mystic turn 2, uh, then uh, Nettletist uh, turn 3, uh, but uh, it it was, uh, it was, Mystic was obviously a solid card in attack, and, <clears throat> and uh, it could tutor for Shadow Spear, which is often needed, but you have Saga for that, and uh, I didn't uh, play uh, Kaldra even in the previous version, uh, and in, at that time I didn't play it because uh, there were a lot of people playing uh, Achmei Charm and uh, I would uh, just often lose to it and Metal Fist was mostly a uh, better choice anyway. Uh, okay, so I ditched uh, Stoneforge Mystic to put the uh, four Ledger Shredders in. As you can see, no Mishra Bubble in here uh, because it's not needed. Uh, so uh, the the play that you do in this deck, in most cases, is a play your uh, Moonsnare prototype or Springly Drum uh, turn one, and hopefully you have Memnite or Ornithopter in hand. Uh, hands like this are usually uh, best hands with this deck. Uh, this this kind of hand uh, means that you can go uh, Drum, uh, that you can play uh, Saga uh, turn one. Uh, with a drum, uh, if you have uh, one zero mana a creature in hand, it's probably best to hold it until uh, turn two and then just cast it uh, to make sure it doesn't die before you make your saga token. It also allows you to cast Nettletist uh, turn two, which can be pretty powerful, and uh, it's uh, also now uh, the new uh, thing you can do is just if you don't have the top tier or the memnite you can play a ledger shredder turn two and one mana spell and there's a lot of them and uh, start doing the conniving and start growing shredder start uh, making some card selection and also in the end in smith uh, it's uh, pretty good with ledger shredder because when you top deck it uh, you find another spell and then uh, again get the connive with Shredder. If you are holding some lands in your hand, you can ditch them and uh, it works uh, pretty well. So, two Urza in a deck, of course, uh, some uh, dot monitors and some uh, usual uh, one offs uh, that you see in this kind of decks. Okay, and that's it. 20 lands on sideboard. We have some removal, uh, some counter spells, some hammer hate, uh, land hate, graveyard hate, uh, one pitting needle is on sideboard, and the two Teferi's time levels. Okay, that's it. So I just uh, finished league, uh, trophy league uh, with this deck, and uh, we will uh, see all the games. Uh, this is uh, so all the games were 2 0 except one game. I won 2 1. Okay, and this is one of my uh, favorite decks to play. I really enjoy this gameplay. Okay, I had the uh, medium hand uh, first. Uh, first game but got a uh, portable hole with smith uh, it's pretty decent uh, my opponent uh, played uh, merfolks this game some yorian version 
and I think it's important uh, I decided uh, I didn't have an uh, island in the play and uh, I found the planes with my second fetch to make sure I don't have island uh, I d decided to immediately kill one of their tokens not to make uh, one, uh, one of their lords not to make another token um, so they didn't have a two blue mana open, just a cover, and so I decided to play my Urza, uh, do some conniving uh, grow Shredder, and uh, play Spell Bomb so I can bounce it uh, in case uh, yeah, I can bounce one Lord if needed, if they attack for a lot of damage. Okay, so the problem for this deck is obviously Merfolk Trickster because it kills uh, my tokens. Uh, but uh, I had a very good hand uh, with Urza, two Sagas, uh, ledger, large Ledger Shredder with uh, Shadow Spear on it. Uh, so, all very good cards. I made my to token immediately, and so I can, uh, so I can uh, just uh, I can just use the usability. Uh, I did a bit of mistake here. I left the island in hand, which I wasn't able to play because of the island walk, so I didn't play it just kept holding it in hand I played my genius mid uh, my opponent uh, unfortunately had a subtlety I drew it immediately uh, I forgot that I don't have white mana uh, but it wasn't uh, very important anyway. I just uh, attacked with uh, with construct token and the shredder. I did uh, another connive ability, uh, left in hand with one smith and one portable hole. Okay, my opponent decided to just to jump block with the construct token. Uh, they had uh, Yorion uh, at this point, but it was uh, too late for them. I was, uh, I had too big advantage. They even let me connive and uh, draw a card with that a while. Uh, there was really uh, no chance for them. Uh, this game, so I just uh, played uh, my, uh, played my. Uh, removal, play the second shredder, uh, connive uh, two cards, uh, get some more counters on shredders, and uh, that was it. Uh, very, very good matchup for my deck. Uh, the Merfolk just can't uh, handle uh, so much uh, pressure. I had a medium hand uh, game two, but had option to play Sentinel turn one and play the fairy turn two. It's pretty decent. Uh, they played the seas. Uh, didn't have any pressure, so I just played my fairy plus it, and uh, drawing uh, Legend Shadow was really good here, so I could uh, start uh, just. Uh, Conniving, which was very important, uh, got me ahead for two turns. I traded with the Silver Guild Depths. Uh, I played, uh, uh, I played just Nettlesis this turn. I didn't have mana to play uh, both, uh, both Shredder and uh, <clears throat> and Nettlesis. So uh, again. Uh, very important uh, card selection for this deck. I was able to get uh, Smith to hand, which is pretty good at this point. Uh, I attacked Salolod, uh, my opponent, uh, this attack. 
uh, yeah, again, just conniving, uh, feeling very good. Uh, with these connives, uh, Ledger Shredder doing a real lot of work for this deck and just uh, holding my Urza, Urza Saga uh, back and making another token uh, growing in Genius Myth and uh, thanks to Shredder again getting to uh, the <clears throat> getting to the draws I need uh, to remove another creature, play Sentinel, try to grow uh, both Ledger Shredders some more, which I did. And at this point, uh, they are really large, so my opponent uh, can maybe deal with Construct Tokens, but a large Shredder is definitely, um, definitely very hard for them, and they can't, they uh, definitely can't uh, deal with this. Okay, so uh, next turn I made some uh, I made some bad attack here. I should have just attacked uh, with uh, Shredder, but I decided to go uh, for, with all. Uh, yeah, this was a really bad attack. But I put them to two life, which is not irrelevant, but nevertheless, uh, pretty, uh, pretty bad attack here from my side. Okay, my opponent played the Hercules recall at this point, so they tapped my shadow before attack. But uh, Hercules recall really don't hurt me uh, that much. I just get uh, more. Uh, Shredder activations, so I was really okay with it. I just uh, exiled uh, their creature again, uh, played some blockers, uh, played Nettle Cyst, and uh, I was again in the same situation as before her physical, so I think it definitely didn't do much. Um, I uh, they played second spell, so I even got the second connive on my second uh, ledger shredder, and uh, I just went uh, I just went for the kill, uh, bounced Yurion on top of the library, and uh, that was it. That was game one against uh, Murfox. Okay, so game two. Game 2 playing first uh, had uh, good hands, Springly Drum, Urza Saga, turn 1. I, because I had Urza Saga, I decided not to play Shadow, just to make, uh, just to make a Construct Token, because it's a very powerful play uh, to do this kind of stuff. I find my Relic of Progenitus, I hold one mana open and get a concede from my opponent. Uh, that was it. A really strong start. It's the strongest start uh, you can have. It's just important to play your uh, uh, free mana, uh, zero mana creature on turn uh, on turn two, so they don't just kill it. Okay, so I play the Sentinel uh, turn one. Uh, they played oh. Reunion, all typical plays, but my opponent uh, didn't have a dredge card again. So I was able just to play a Relic of Progenitus, hold Rebuke, a hold Relic. Uh, yeah, I just, uh, I just countered. I think I countered the Hegel and they got the concede uh, game two. So very quick games. I had everything. It's pretty uh, unwinnable for my dredge opponent and my Merfolk opponent. Okay, so uh, game three playing second and uh, against the Hammer deck. I got a pretty uh, pretty weak starting hand. Uh, 
but luckily I drew a portable hole for their cigar Zaid and they didn't have a third mana so they just had to tutor for Kaldra uh, while I was just uh, making uh, construct, construct tokens uh, so they finally uh, finally put Kaldra into play start attacking but it's definitely uh, kind of too late now I just uh, uh, I could get the Shadow Spear, but I decided to go for Rattle Spell Bomb in case they put some hammer on this Caldra. And I just uh, drew into 1000 cards and attacked uh, for 9, and my opponent uh, conceded. As you can see, I just played the uh, Triple Tot Monitor, chained them all, and uh, drew, drew a bunch of cards, uh, Portable Hole. For next turn, two smiths, and it was game over. So my opponent conceded after seeing that. Uh, this deck has a really strong plays like that. Okay, he kept a medium hand at turn one, uh, but had the pitting needle in hand, which is, seems like really important. Uh, they play Giver, they play Stone Forge, they play a Hammer. You can. You can just target all that with the needle, and at this point uh, they find Kaldra, so I needed to name uh, Stoneforge Mystic. I was able to play my third monitor, uh, had to kill their uh, Giver of Thrones here, uh, no choice. So I just uh, hold uh, the Spreading Seas in hand and uh, was just waiting for some draws my opponent draws a card with hammer has just one artifact at this point and that drew into uh, sideboard the teeming skydiver just uh, stealing their uh, hammer i decided to wait one more turn with the spreading seed to just play my secret call stepped Attack for two. My opponent uh, finally uh, kills uh, kills March. Uh, let's me draw a card. Please, Kaldra. I draw the card with Paladin. And they decide to attack with Kaldra, which was a big mistake. Uh, they did play in another Ornithopter, but I just uh, I decided it's best to just force them to block with uh, Paladin and uh, deal uh, with the uh, Caldra later because it wasn't such a problem for me because I had two flyers so I drew into land and just equip uh, on a sentinel uh, attack with the both of my flyers for four damage uh, put them on five I put them on five cast my uh, shadow spear uh, to equip on flyer for five damage and that was it Okay, so was that the second game? Was that the second game? I think it was. Yeah, that was the second game. Okay. Uh, okay, so uh, game four. The only game I didn't win with a two goal. I had to mulligan uh, hand uh, one. Uh, kept an okay hand with uh, some Grey Arcade, one removal, and the Net Assist. Uh, pretty medium hand, nothing special happening here, just uh, Net Assist and Urza Saga. Oh yeah, it was, uh, it was the Glimpse Elementals deck. And they played uh, uh, they played the plant token, so I just decided to uh, kill the kill the plant token immediately because they often just uh, try to go turn three shardless agent, and it's uh, good for them to have as low uh, permanence as possible. And they did uh, go for it. They cast immediately shardless agent. It's very bad to cast it with only three permanents, but they went for it and uh, just cast Glimpse. I immediately remove uh, Glimpse from Graveyard so they don't can shuffle it back. And um, 
my opponent uh, just got uh, two lands so they were in a worse situation than before casting the Shadow's Agent I just uh, didn't have much here just uh, waiting uh, on my uh, constructs and to start uh, attacking with constructs um, try to kill one more creature, cast a monitor uh, next turn so that was the plan uh, my opponent uh, didn't have a third land at this point and when I start when I'm when they realized I would start making tokens and just attacking them uh, for a bunch uh, they conceded okay so on game two it was the only game I lost had a pretty good hand uh, with uh, some one acceleration uh, I think uh, relic is kind of uh, important uh, to have here so they can't go infinite uh, with endurance and uh, so this I just I think I just boarded in the three rebukes and uh, two uh, relic of uh, progenitus uh, they find uh, unfortunately foundation breaker uh, to kill my musner prototype so i was just left with uh, one land uh, drew the second one but i wasn't able to play uh, ingenious mid uh, this turn because of it i just had to uh, play my spell bomb uh, proceed the turn hold the rebuke And they went for Fable. And Fable is pretty good uh, here, uh, pretty good for them here. So I decided just to counter the Fable, which means I'll probably just kill the plant token and let them resolve. Let them resolve the, the cascade. They didn't, they didn't do uh, anything this turn, so they also had a kind of a slow hand, but unfortunately my hand was also uh, not uh, much, and they, had, uh, they were holding subtlety here, so they put uh, in Genius Mint on my top, and I have a lot of cards that don't do much here, like a portable hole, uh, it's uh, just uh, serves the purpose of removing the some tokens of the field. Okay, so my opponent uh, played the. Uh... Okay, so uh, my opponent uh, just played the uh, wave shifter, and they had uh, two uh, three two flyers at this point, and they could start attacking me. Uh, so it wasn't a great situation, also a glimpse threatening uh, all the time, so just waiting for them to play glimpse or something. And uh, my portable hole was just able to exile one clue token at this point, so I had some pretty bad draws, didn't draw anything I need. Uh, they also just uh, killed my uh, ingenious mid, uh, so I was left with practically nothing. And uh, they could, uh, they had six damage in the air, and uh, that was it. I wasn't able to recover from this situation. Okay, so uh, time for uh, game three. Was this game two? I think it was. Okay, so I had a pretty good hand, game 3, uh, uh, Genius Smith uh, to start doing some damage, uh, Metallic Rebuke, uh, 2 lands, Monitor for later turns, so everything, kind of everything I need. I just found the basic planes, uh, and uh, at this point I, start, uh, I drew into a Metacyst. So I think the best option here was just to play my Nettlesis because it uh, hits uh, hardest and uh, it's, 
easiest to close out the games with the Metal Sears. Uh, so I just I was just able to play my ingenious maths, try to find some artifacts. Unfortunately, didn't find anything. Uh, but I played uh, Ornithopter, grew my ingenious mate, uh, hold the rebuke, uh, hold the monitor for next turn, just attack her for 4 damage. And uh, it was a good, very good plan. My opponent also didn't have any other permanents except for lands, so it's not very likely for them to succeed uh, to combo off even if they have the cascade and uh, I was left with dot monitor in hand which I was able to cast next turn driven to smith but monitor seemed like a better option uh, so I just uh, drew two more cards uh, grew my engineer smith uh, attack for nine damage I leave them on uh, 4 life, which means they have to combo off uh, next turn or they are dead. And they uh, they decided to pl uh, play a Shardless Agent, but uh, it seems like they had all the glimpses in their hand. So it was a pretty bad hand from opponent. Uh, all glimpses in hand because Shardless Agent didn't uh, cascade into anything. And uh, that was a pretty fun and easy win uh, for me. Game four, so uh, it it was the deck that I only lost one game to. And the last deck, uh, last game, I had to uh, mulligan to six, but had a pretty decent hand. Uh, Sentinel turn four, uh, Urza Saga Shredder in hand. Unfortunately. Uh, I had to play Shredder a second here. That doesn't happen uh, too often, but I decided to play my Urza Saga on turn three because I wanted to play uh, wanted to play <clears throat> uh, the Nettle Test uh, turn three anyway. So I started attacking the Grist. Uh, had my Urza Saga on field. I removed the birds, uh, drew another hole for Geist, and just uh, succeeded to Konai one Shredder, get some token, they jumped the, the Nettle Cyst and they let damage uh, on Shredder. And uh, they played some more creatures here, but I, I was able, and they, were, they had, it's pretty important uh, when they have a 7 mana for uh, for short, as you can see, three, four, five, six, seven mana for short, which means they are definitely going for Yagmut uh, this turn, and that means I have to kill them uh, this turn because it will be uh, very hard for me to kill them after that, and uh, that's why I, I equip a Nettle Cyst on my Trample creature and attacked with both. Uh, they were able to find. Uh, to find uh, Yagmot, but uh, they can't uh, survive this situation no matter what because uh, they lose damage, they lose life each time they uh, put the counter on my token, so they can't survive that. And that was it. Uh, luckily, I was fast enough uh, to win uh, game one against Yagmot. Uh, game 2 uh, was uh, even more difficult uh, because they were playing first and again they had uh, Grist uh, turn 2 and I had a uh, pretty slow hand uh, just uh, 2 rebukes uh, Urza Saga so nothing, nothing really good and they were able to play Grist at turn 2 which is their strongest play I was able to counter the Geist at least at turn 3 um, so at this point just holding uh, uh, my saga uh, to make some tokens and also holding rebuke and dispatch if needed uh, they went for girl of messenger i did let that through uh, i had dispatch in hand at the spell bomb on field so I decided to, to make uh, make my tokens uh, 
make both of my tokens, put, put a pitting needle on the wrist and start tucking, start tucking them, uh, trying to put them on uh, as low life as possible. So they play Vol of Roots here, they pay, play Hapatra and I exile a messenger in response, which means they can't uh, chord for uh, Yagmot end of uh, turn, so they would have to wait on uh, to do it uh, on their turn. Uh, and that's why I decided to dispatch uh, the Garav messenger. Uh, I also had the spell bomb on field. And at this point, uh, they were tapped out and not able to uh, find the Agmod, so I cast my uh, Urza, uh, Urza Lord High Artificial, get, played my monitor, played my second monitor, uh, played all of my artifacts, uh, spring leaf drums, uh, prototypes, uh, just grow my uh, construct tokens, and uh, also uh, I needed to hold the rebuke. So I was able to attack just with one uh, construct token. And they played the Agmot. Uh, I of course uh, countered the Agmot with Rebuke. Uh, I think they had uh, another. They had definitely chord in hand, but again not able to cast chord for four. Uh, then at this point I went for. Urza, Urza uh, ability tapped uh, 10 mana to do it twice and find the uh, tot monitor with my second uh, Urza ability but drew just into two lands so I just attacked everything and uh, hold back the Eater spell bomb. It's uh, very good to put uh, Yagmot into as low as possible uh, life in case they put Yagmat on field, uh, they can't uh, just do a lot of the triggers and they weren't, weren't able to uh, find Yagmat with short, as I said. They could just find the Geist and it wasn't enough. They didn't draw into, uh, they didn't draw into Yagmat, so that was it. Okay, so... I think, uh, yes, that uh, that uh, were all the games. Uh, okay, so uh, I like the, I really like uh, gameplay from this deck. Uh, I've been a fan of this deck uh, from a while ago, since the MH2 came out, and uh, this kind of uh, blue-white decks appeared first time. And uh, I always play it in uh, this shell. I just uh, change a few cards from time to time, like this time, uh, just putting Shredder in instead of uh, the Stoneforge Mystics. I think uh, Shredder's uh, offered some really good uh, card selection against a lot of decks. Uh, that, that was good against a lot of decks I played in uh, this league, and uh, it uh, made it made it possible to just uh, attack uh, uh, attack on air with a large uh, flyer. You can even equip a metal cyst on it if needed and the shadow spear and uh, it's uh, I think it's definitely very good here. Uh, we don't play Misha's Bubble but we play Memnite, we play Ornithopter so we have uh, and also Springleaf Drum and the Prototype mostly gets us 3 mana turn 2, which means we can very easily uh, connive uh, on turn 2 in many situations. And uh, if not, uh, it, you can save it for later and play it on next turn. So, I think Shredder uh, was pretty good in this league and pretty good in this deck. And uh, I uh, wasn't uh, too happy about uh, Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, in this deck, it felt too slow just to get a Nettle Cyst uh, turn 2 in hand. And uh, But Nettle Cyst is pretty important. It's also a fine card to play in this deck. And uh, that's it. Uh, hope you liked the games. Uh, hope you liked the deck. Uh, mana 
base is pretty slick, slick uh, looking like this. Just uh, four of all, uh, four fetches, four duels, uh, four coasts, two basics, four saga. Uh, pretty uh, working, pretty good for me. And uh, that's it. Uh, that was it. Uh, until the next time, then.